Hello YouTube, it's me, your favorite presidential candidate, and I'm here to present you with the irresistible, irrefutable, inconclusive, ultimate list of the top five Indonesian dishes of all time. Now, putting aside the fact that I'm essentially just an American degenerate, I've only ever visited Indonesia a few times, so you might say it's impossible for me to be qualified in any way to make the following claims about Indonesian food. And also disregarding the fact that Indonesia is an incredibly diverse country with cuisine and culture and dialect and language varying from region to region. Furthermore, the following dishes aren't even unique and exclusive to Indonesia and can be found in other countries in Southeast Asia and Asia and in the world and uh, but who cares? Here on YouTube.com, everything is fact. Coming in at number five is nasi putih with ceplok telur cooked setengah matang style, known in America talk as white rice with a half cooked fried egg on top. <laughs> Before you laugh, I know my Indonesian sucks, but um, I'm trying my best right now and I'm really just bearing my soul to you. So if you make fun of me, you'll have to answer to God. I have a lot of good memories associated with this dish because I actually used to be a very picky eater as a kid. For like lunch and dinner, my mom would have to mold cooked white rice into little spheres, exactly five of them. And that's all I would have for the meal. And maybe if I was feeling a little zesty, I would have one or two chicken nuggets. I legitimately hated the act of eating, but this all changed. One summer when I was in Indonesia at my grandma's house and I was being a stupid little kid and refusing to eat. So my grandma made me a plate of white rice with a fried egg on top and my world was changed. I realized food could be delicious. Another great feature of white rice with egg, you can add whatever you want to it. If you want to make it like actually Indonesian, you'd eat it with abon, which is apparently called meat floss in English. That sounds really nasty, but abon's delicious. Uh, you could add ketchup manis, which is soy sauce, but not that soy sauce, this soy sauce. It's, it's sweet and the viscosity is thicker. When you're really sad and apathetic about whatever goes into your body, I like throwing on some hot fries or maybe some Cheetos or just straight up ranch is good. Miss Vicky's jalapeno chips, Frito flavor twist, really just any chip that you find at the convenience store nearby because you don't know what you're doing with your life. Now at number four we have gado gado. So in general gado gado is basically a salad of cooked vegetables with stuff like uh, bean sprouts and spinach. What is it those long green beans and potatoes and egg and tofu. Did I say bean sprouts? I like it with kropot which is fried crackers or and lontong which is shaved rice. I really don't know how to describe a lot of foods obviously. All of that's then topped with a ton of peanut sauce. I'm referring specifically to the gado gado you get when you're at your grandma's house. It's ripe and early in the morning at 3 p.m. You're just absent-mindedly scritching at the mosquito bites on your elbow. The door is slightly open. You can feel a cool breeze coming through. You hear the cats and the cars and the birds and the cars and the street vendors calling and so I'm talking about the the gado gado that you get from one of those street vendors. Then you bring it in and you eat it as you watch sumo wrestling on TV. It should come wrapped in it or on top of like a piece of brown paper that's kind of greasy too from the peanut sauce and it should look like an absolute mess. I chose gado gado not only because of how much I enjoyed eating it whenever I was in Indonesia but also because of how flexible and easy to adjust it is. You can make it as healthy or as unhealthy as you want. Also gado gado it's such a fun name gado gado it literally just means mix mix that's so fun. The only reason gado gado isn't higher up on this list is because sometimes I've gotten it before and it's had bitter gourd in it. I don't really have much to say about bitter gourd aside from the fact that it can rot in hell. Sitting at the prestigious position of number three on this list is the Batmi Special GM Pangsit Goreng Meal. So for all you uncultured folk out there, Batmi GM is, is like a fast food franchise in Indonesia. For just under 40,000 rupiah, which is just under three dollars in American speak, Batmi GM gives you a hearty bowl of warm noodles with these sweet, salty, savory chicken and vegetables and then some pangsit goreng, which are like fried dumplings. I'm a huge fan of dumplings and I solemnly believe that the pangsit goreng from Batmi GM are at the pinnacle 
of dumpling innovation. The geniuses at Batmi GM have engineered the perfectly light and crispy pangsit goreng. It's just a, like a li little nickel size lump of meat and surrounded by this beautifully crispy dumpling skin. I can eat 20 of those on my own, but then you combine this delicious pangsit goreng with the noodles and that's that's just art. Number two, a very good, very tasty, beloved dish from the land of the free. Satay ayam, aka grilled chicken on a stick with lots of peanut and sweet soy sauce. More specifically, I am referring to the satay ayam you get when you're at the sarangan with your family. There are horses, people, horses, boats, more mosquitoes than you ever thought existed. And the walkway all around the lake is lined with these open seating areas and there's a man just squatting over a girl fanning the flames. There's a cigarette sticking out of the corner of his mouth. Occasionally a gentle breeze comes by so the ashes on his cigarette gently drift down to coat the chicken on the grill. Delicious. And you see this little scene. So you and your family sit down on the on the mats and you order up a plate of ten satay and maybe you get some lontong and then you'll maybe get some orange juice. I love me an orange juice. But it doesn't matter how much food you initially get because you're there with your dad and your mom and your brother and your sister and your cousin and there's another cousin. There's your auntie and your uncle and anyways all that food will disappear in under five minutes because every little skewer comes with about three measly tiny little pieces of chicken. So you keep getting more satay until you're filled with chicken and regret and you're just laying there in the shade listening to the waves lap at the shore of the lake. But then your dad and your brother decide that they want to go riding on the speedboats that go around the lake. And you say, no, no, I'm so full and I'm tired. But you get on the boat anyway. And it's really fun the whole time. But then five minutes later, you feel like dying in a hole because you just ate about 50 skewers of satay. Feels good. And now the moment we've all been waiting for the top of the crop, the ultimate champion, the best Indonesian dish of all places and time is Indomie. Yes, you got that right. Not rendang, not soto, not opor, not gulai, not nasi goreng, uh, which I, I must admit are all very amazing and delicious foods and are about a hundred times better than indomie. If you haven't had these dishes before, I highly recommend that you go try them. But indomie. Hands down, indomie is undoubtedly the greatest culinary invention. The greatness of indomie speaks for itself. Like you just go and make yourself a bowl right now. You can make it with soup, you could stir fry it, you can add meat or vegetables or lots of other tasty things that make it even more beautiful than it already is. And if you disagree with my choices and any of the things I said about Indonesian food, um, you shouldn't. Please validate me and go make yourself a bowl of Indomie and look me in the eye and say it's not the best thing you've ever had. Hello, this is an exclusive little uh, end screen salsa speak here. Um, so this YouTube page, I know it's tiny and uh, unnoticed by the world, but this is my only uh, really public platform, I guess. And I would like to express my support and solidarity for the Black Lives Matter movement and current efforts to combat police brutality and systemic racism. I'll be putting some links on in the description to stay informed and updated. Be safe if you're protesting. If you're not protesting, there's still plenty of other ways to um, get involved and contribute to good social political change. Hope this was an entertaining, enjoyable little, little thing I made here. Um, I love you all. Goodbye.